Let's figure out how we can achieve this effect in Figma. As you can see on the top part of this screen, which is a screenshot from a Apple Watch app, you can see that there is this blur in the top area, but it's not an ordinary kind of background blur. Uh, as you can see at first in the bottom part, the blur is not as significant, but as you go upwards, the blur amount increases. So how can we achieve this in Figma? I didn't find an official name for this effect, so I guess I'm gonna just call it like gradient blur header or something like that. Also, if you scroll further down, this is a list of stocks. It's from the Apple Stocks app. If you scroll down, this will behave as a sticky top header or bar type of thing similar to what we have, for example, on, on these pages in this app, right? As you can see, here is a simple gradient header, but it's not, there is no blur and it's on all the pages. For this effect, I'm gonna be using the source file from my course on how you can design mobile apps. As you can see, we have a simple design system, we have multiple pages, so if you'd like to learn how uh, to build a design system, how to design an app in Figma, definitely go and watch this video on my channel. And if you purchase the source file, you'll, you're gonna get the source file for this effect as well, because I will most likely be updating the source file for this on my store with this new effect that we're gonna create right now. So let's get into it. Now for this, I'm gonna be using the dashboard screen. So when we launch the prototype and when I scroll down on my, in Figma, you can see that we have a sticky header. Right now, there's a simple linear gradient, which ensures that as you, as you go up the screen, it, it, it fades out gradually. We can turn that off. If we turn that off, and reset the prototype actually, then there is no fade out. It's simply transparent. On the other hand, if we just add a black transparent fill, this happens, right? So as you can see whatever we update here because of the fact that this is set to position fixed. Because of that, we update this interaction. We make sure that this moves with you as you scroll. This effect is gonna have to be happening in this area as well. So we will be modifying or adding to this component, to this status bar, somehow to achieve this effect. But how exactly? Now, we're gonna need two layers. Let me just create two rectangles. I will be taking these dimensions, which is 393, that's 393 and 59, right? Now we have the exact dimensions of the, the header. We're gonna need two of those. One of these will actually have the blur, the background blur effect, right? So let's just ramp that up to 40, I guess. We can always change that later. And to actually be able to see this effect in action, we're gonna have to reduce the opacity of the fill color. But as you can see, if we go all the way down to zero, the effect disappears because there is no, no fill to carry this effect. There is a cool little workaround, by the way. So, for example, if you set the background to white and you do 100%, and then you set the blend mode to multiply, right? You achieve the same effect as if it, as if there were no color, because multiply uses the color that you have in the fill to darken the background. But you cannot darken anything with the white color, essentially, right? So that's why nothing happens. But the fill is there, and we are able to use that to carry our background blur effect. Okay, so we're gonna need this. I'm gonna rename that to blur element. And then we're gonna have to, we need to have a second element that's gonna be called mask element, right? And this mask element is gonna do what? This mask element is gonna mask this object so that it's fully visible here, but fully transparent here. And we're gonna achieve that by going to the fill, 
changing the fill to a linear gradient and then changing the direction of the linear gradient to vertical, okay? And so let's just use uh, completely black for this. You're gonna get 100% opacity on the top, but 0% opacity on the bottom. And now if we overlay these two on top of each other, which means mask element is gonna be below the blur element, we select both of them and then we go to use as mask. Now check this out, right? So as you can see, there is a blur on the top and no blur at the bottom. Now it still doesn't quite look like this. So where is the problem? The problem is with the gradient. The gradient determines where the blur starts and when it's fully visible and when it's fully transparent essentially. So if I use this gradient slider to position this, you can see that we can determine where the blur is gonna be in its full effect, where it's gonna end to blur this fully. Uh, now, this means, what you can see right here, probably means that we're gonna have to change the value of the blur element to like, I don't know, maybe 16. Let's try that, right? Probably somewhere in that area. Maybe a bit less, maybe 12. And maybe we're gonna again play around with the, oops, change the positions. Nice, we can play again around with the position of this gradient. Maybe we can add another stop to basically adjust how this whole thing behaves. Let's set this to 50. And we can fine tune this effect to match our requirements, right? Perfect. Now let's just take this whole thing. Let's just take this whole thing and implement that here so you can see it in action. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just rename this to gradient blur header, this whole thing. I'm gonna change that to a component so that we can actually reuse this, right? I'm gonna place it somewhere around here, let's say, okay? Into the design system area, and then I'm gonna use an instance of this, and that's gonna be here, gradient blur header, and I'm gonna place that inside of my frame. I'm gonna move that to the very top, Wait, actually, this is not inside of the frame. Let me, or is it? It is, okay. Align it to the center and top, and then move that to the very bottom. But at the same time, in prototype, we're gonna set this to fixed, stay in place. And we are going to change the, we're gonna hide the status bar fill so that only the gradient blur header can be scene, right? That's the only background element that's gonna be there. And now if we open the prototype, you can see that when we scroll, we get this gradual blur effect, beautiful, exactly as intended. The only problem is that you cannot see this area behind the blur, but that doesn't matter because the goal of this video is to show you how to create this effect and um, how you can implement that into a fixed header. We can also extend this, make it larger, and then we can expand the area of the blur effect, right? So then this happens. We could also, to counteract this background, we could actually set this to normal and the fill of the blur element to normal and then reduce the opacity to 30. Let's see if that's gonna work. You can see that this becomes cloudy and a little bit opaque. So then you can actually see the black background area better. So here we go. So whenever you're struggling with the background, you can always do this. But as you can see, this is the effect. At the bottom, you get no blur, but at the top, you get complete blur along with a white fade out. So that's how you achieve this. I hope you found this useful. Go and check out this video and download the source file if you want to support the channel and if you want to save this and reuse this template for mobile app design. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.